Hi, greetings and welcome back with another video in Roy's desk. So finally, I got the PCBs delivered from Robo.in and in this video, I'll mainly focus on the process I followed to get these PCBs delivered. So without wasting any further more time, let us get started. This is the circuit that I used for making the PCBs and this circuit is not designed by me. This circuit is there in the data sheet. This circuit is there in many different websites. Little differences give or take. And there is one website called Circuit Basics where they have designed stereo amplifiers based on this LM3886 ICs. There they have given detailed explanation of the full circuit. So in the website they have given the circuit, the PCB, the calculations and almost mentioned all the details of the project. So I kind of referred that website and made some minor changes to my circuit and the PCB and that's it. So if I quickly go through the circuit, so once the input comes in, we have our DC blocking capacitor and also this capacitor C3 with R2 forms a high pass filter which attenuates everything before the cutoff. Generally this is there to protect the circuit from very low frequencies. Then this R1 together with C2 forms a low pass filter and it filter out the very high frequencies that might affect the amplifier. We can connect the C2 capacitor between the input terminals also. It will do the same job. Then we have the feedback with R4 and R3 together with C4. R3 and C4 forms one low pass filter circuit which doesn't let any DC component to enter into the inverting input. Then we have a slight delay circuit with D1, R5 and C5. This calculation is again given in that web page. Oh, and by the way, I will give the link of that web page in the description. Please go and check it out. They have given all detailed calculation of each of the components. Then we have the Zobel network with R6 and C6. This is usually used to neutralize the inductance that is present there in the coil of the speaker. Then we have the TL network with R7 and L1. This neutralizes the effect of capacitance present in the output. And also we have the C13 and R8 which are again stability components. So this TL network, Zobel network and C13 and R8 are all stability components in the circuit. They protect the amplifier from going into oscillations when there is any unwanted scenario happening in the output. So that's the full circuit explanation. It's pretty simple and it's already there in the data sheet. So there is nothing new in here that I've added. So let us go into the PCB design. So welcome to Easy EDS software now. And if you are new to this Easy EDS software, please go check out this video. Here I have talked kind of the basics of how to design a circuit in a Easy EDA and also the how to design one PCB in Easy EDA. So moving on, this is our circuit in here and this is the PCB. So I have used double sided PCB design this time and the reason for that is because I wanted to have a ground plane instead of a star ground. So if I switch to the bottom layer. You can see that the full area is flooded with ground and this is called the ground plane. And one more thing you can see that on the right side we have the signal ground of the input ground that is coming in here and on the left side we can see the power ground. These two are separated, these two are nowhere connected and it's separated by this small gap in here. The reason is that I want to connect this signal ground and the power ground directly to the main rectifier circuit. And if I switch on the both the layers you can see that I try to make the power lines thicker and also the output line a bit thicker than the other traces. I try to place all the components as close to each other. One important point you will see there is nowhere the TL network present in here and also there is no feedback resistance present in here. So if you see the circuit R4 is the main feedback resistor. So you can see in here R4 is not there. If you see the R4 is connected between third pin and the ninth pin. So we have to solder the resistor directly to the third and the ninth pin. So the feedback network should be as small as possible and that is why even in the circuit basics web page they have done the same thing and I have seen this in many other circuits where they will directly solder the feedback resistor to the pins of the IC. And TL network there is no need of the TL network to be present in the board. You can directly have the TL network before the speaker. So once we are done with the PCB design we will download the Gerber file. So that we can upload that Gerber file to the Robo.in website. So for downloading Gerber file, we will go to fabrication, PCB fabrication Gerber file. Then you can check DRC, it's not needed. So it will download the Gerber file in zip format. So now we will go to the Robo.in website. 
Now mainly there are two places where you can order your PCBs. One is Lion Circuits and another one is Robo.in. So you can check the instant coat in Lion Circuits like this. So you just see the material is FR4, it's fine, layers 2. Quantity 5, that's the minimum quantity by the way. Design is one single PCB, 1.6 is fine, the PCB thickness. Green is the cheapest one, other colors will be costlier. And all other things are fine. Now just upload the Gerber file. Let us upload our Gerber file that we downloaded. This one. Okay. So you can see it says 5 to 6 days. If you select 4 to 5 days, it will be double the price. 5 to 6 days if it says. Then the price for 5 PCBs will be 1128 rupees. I was getting 10 PCBs in the same price from Robu.in so I, that's why I went for Robu so for Robu.in you just search for Robu PCB manufacturing the website first link that will open up is our website for ordering the PCBs again the same options FR4 material 2 layers for our case 5 is the minimum quantity 1.6 mm thickness is fine green again and just gonna upload the Gerber file from here so once the Gerber file is uploaded into the website, you just have to order it and see this is my order details. So now that I'm looking at the date they have delivered it, it's before 20 days. I ordered on 7th October and it got delivered actually on 23rd of October. So yeah, it, it was quite fast delivery from Robu and the quality of the boards, you will see it just in few minutes. So I ordered 10 PCBs and that's the price that came out and as you can see it's much cheaper than Lion circuits. So that's the procedure I followed and it's pretty simple. Only place where you can mess up is designing the PCBs. It might be that some of the spacings or some of the footprints are done wrong. And apart from that there are no places where you can mess up. It's pretty straightforward process. So now let us move into the unboxing of the PCBs. So 10 PCBs. Yep, 10 PCBs. The quality of the board is pretty solid. So as you see in here, I am not using star ground. Instead, I'm using ground plane. I'm flooding the full area with the ground. And another thing is, you see, this is the small signal side and this is the large signal side. Basically, this is the input signal side and this is the main power ground side and it's nowhere connected in here, not even with the 10 ohm resistor. So, I have some different idea for this. I will show you when I will solder all the components to this board. That will be in the next video definitely because I don't want to drag this video and I still need to order some components that are, that are not available with me at this time. So let me show you the two mistakes that I did. So as I was trying to test fit the components into the board, I noticed that the spade connector footprint that I have used in here is wrong. I mean the spacing is fine, just the holes are a bit too less. I have two different types of spade connectors in here. Both of them doesn't fit in these holes. So I should have measured the diameter of this leads and adjusted the footprint accordingly. But yeah, I am not going to change the PCB definitely for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to file off the leads here so that it fits in this. And another big disaster that I did is this JST connector. I don't know why I use this footprint, but it's way too small. It will be very hard to solder wires or anything in here. 
um, but I will manage somehow. Maybe I I'm not going to order the PCBs again for this, and all the other stuff is just fine. Everything fits perfectly as I wanted it to be. Just this two mistakes. Now, if you see the mistakes that I have done, if I take the measure tool and I measure the JST connector, you can see the the length is one point two five mm. It's way too small and I have to update this in the Gerber file. And if you see the whole size of this ones, the whole size is 1.199 mm. I should have gone for higher diameter or at least measured the spade connectors before creating the footprint. And I tried to keep the least distance between the tab and the PCB so that the heatsink can sit on it without, without touching the PCB in here. So I will order the parts which I'm not having with me at this moment to finish this board and in the next video I will solder all the components to this board. I will test it and I will also do one step response test in the next video. So that would be all for this video. Stay tuned for the next video. If you have any questions please drop that in the comment and please do like, share and subscribe and also press the bell icon for the notifications. So till then bye bye.